Before I go on to what I really view as the interview, I want to take this opportunity to get uh, to do a public service because there's this real propaganda blitz that's never ending that denies that a lot of things have ever happened, denies that there's racism, denies that there's been genocide. I just saw the Wall Street Journal denying that uh, the coup with Pinochet ever happened and you know so just for the record on camera in your opinion it, 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 is there racism? <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, you know, practically speaking, it's not even a question. It's a reality. So, it's got, it's, it's a, the way the world economic structure is ordered, set in motion, it's based, a great deal of that is based upon racism. When you look at the exploitation of so-called third world countries or countries of people of color. When you look at what America represents itself, it was racism. So racism is a very integral part of what's going on. Um, yeah, so it, it exists at every level. Yes. <laughs> you know, go back and find the numbers. You know, what percentage of people own all the wealth of the planet? And of that percentage of people, what color are they? You know, so I mean, so there's an obvious, and, 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 and in relationship to the total population, what percentage <laughs> does that number of people represent? And there's a vast disparity. That's why you have extreme wealth and extreme poverty. And if one just deals with reality, you know, obviously, you know, uh, this century's, what is 21st century? This century's technologic um, civilization exists where it does because of the gold they found on, on the people of the land of this hemisphere. And this is, uh, this is color. <laughs> you know? Now, the whites may have done it amongst themselves before they came here. All right? Well, then maybe then it wasn't race. <laughs> but when they did it to us, it was race. And when they did it to the black people, and they did it to the Asian, when they did it to the people of color, it was race. You know, it's not just economic, it's race. It's economics based upon race. So basically, the entire structure we, that we live in now is based upon, we, we've been, we're indoctrinated and programmed, all right, to perceive reality through a white racially based uh, subservient system to God a male god. And that's what we see here. In other parts of the world, uh, it's some other type of subservient system to their, re to their religion's <laughs> male god. And so I think, you know, uh, yeah, race has everything in the world to do with it. It, 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 you know, it affects everything. Well, I, I think that the American people better prepare themselves for a new reality. <laughs> I mean, either people are totally supportive of the way the government's behaving with its war-making policies, or they're outraged over it. The ones that are outraged seem to be surprised. And that surprise seems to be a part of the outrage. And what I think is, you know, that people just better get used to what's coming. Because I, my own personal opinion is that America is as close to Nazi Germany as close can get. I think we're in the Thousand Year Reich. I think that that thing is for real. I think that, I think that in World War II, see, I look at it, that on this planet, there's an industrial, there's an industrial Reich, and, it, and, it, and it, it's a bureaucracy is the corporate Nazi. And they create a class of ethnic rich. And this thousand year right thing is very important to them because that industrial ruling class that's on this planet, see, everything in the end runs through them. All development and progress. And, and, and anyway, this industrial right, 
They created a nationalistic Nazi to have World War II Germany. And they, they created a nationalistic Nazi to sacrifice for the good of the global Nazi. Because creating the nationalistic Nazi, because to remember, Hitler, after World War I, Germany had these heavy, heavy restitution charges laid upon, reparations things laid upon them, outrageous reparations things. And then the value of the gold was shifted and changed, so they made the reparations even more after World War I. But yet, between World War I and World War II, Germany had enough money to build this incredible, massive killing machine. They had to get that money from somewhere. Somebody had to underwrite all of that because they were under these heavy debts. So I think the nationalistic Nazi was created because the, with the creation of the national, nationalistic Nazi, they, they altered the, eco the economy of Europe. They took them into the jet age, the age of antibiotics, the nuclear age. That war by itself just leapfrogged the Industrial Revolution by light years. Because, you know, at, like all, this, all the stuff that Mengele did with his medical experiments, or all the stuff that the German scientists did, when the Americans won, the Americans incorporated them in. Took their knowledge, their views, all of their stuff, incorporated all the knowledge, everything they had learned, America, the Americans incorporated into their, into their worldview. Somebody gave all these Nazi war criminals sanctuary on the Western Hemisphere in Central and South America. See, so, something going on to help. So I think the Nazi thing is a very real thing. I think where we're at now, in this thousand year Reich venture, was that in the 80s, the General Agreement on Trades and Tariffs, which created the World Trade Organization, well, the GATT is made up of 180 nations or so. But one of the things about joining the General Agreement on Trades and Tariffs is that all the member nations have to agree that they will obey the decisions of the World Trade Organization. The decision-making process of the World Trade Organization, all national sovereignties become subservient to this. They be, national sovereignty becomes subservient to these economic decisions made by the World Trade Organization. And the way that that filters down, you know, I was wondering, well, how are the American people going to take this when they find out that they won't have the right to demonstrate anymore? How are they going to take it when they find out that they're going to have to take wage cuts or that they're going to have to give up environmental protections because, on a, because some organization is going to tell them that they have to? They're not going to accept this. Because as an example, it's like, let's say there's some company in Illinois, and Illinois has these strict environmental standards, but there's a country in Bulgaria that has no environmental standards. So that company can make a lot of money because it doesn't have environmental standards. On a global level, the company in Chicago can't compete with the company in Bulgaria. So they appeal, so they take this case to the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization can then turn around and say to the state of Illinois that you have to alter your environmental standards. And the state of Illinois has to do it. because of these, decisions, these other decisions that were made. Now, so I figured, well, most people are going to object to this, and they're going to rebel against it. And then, lo and behold, comes 911. They knock down those towers and attack the Pentagon building, and all of a sudden, you've got the, super, you've got the USA Patriot Act, <laughs> which, which makes it legal for the government to stop all dissent as it chooses to do so. All they got to do is call it a national security risk or a terrorist threat. And so someday some worker's going to want to go on strike for a better wage and they're going, to be called, they're going to be called economic terrorists because they're threatening the economic stability of the corporation or whatever. Of, <laughs> or you're going to, people are going to try to protect their environment and they'll be called terrorists for it. And all the laws through the Super Patriot Act, all the things are set in motion which makes it legal for the government to do this. See, all this is coming. All of this is coming, I'm telling you. You know, it's, it's like they're going back to the middle, the dark ages. You know, the dark ages, the landlord, the royalty, the thief, the serf, the peasant. Going back to that.
The disparity between the rich and the poor is getting, is getting larger and larger and larger. And as of the year 2000, there were close to 3 million people that were under some kind of custody from being death row to being wearing an electronic bracelet or to just being on probation. By the year 2100, they expect that number to be 33 million people. The large, one of the largest building industries taking place in this country now are prisons. Well, they, they're building, so, so, but yet crime, when you look at crime, even no matter how high it gets and how the crime rates go, see, there's, there seems to be a fluctuation on crime, but they're anticipating a, a much larger prison population. So that means, I interpret that to mean there are going to be, there are, there are new crimes coming, <laughs> right, that haven't, there's going to be a new def, definition of crime. The American people are in for a hard time. See, what the white people of America don't understand is that, see, they were given certain privileges for a couple, two or three hundred years because, because their owners, <laughs> right, their, their elite needed them. Needed them to, they needed them to, ta number one, conquer the land, conquer the people, conquer the land, and then, and then attack the land, attack the resources of the land, turn it into material, and have a certain productivity. So they needed the white people to do this. So they had to give them certain privileges. But now it's all gone global. They don't need the white people to do this anymore. They don't need them the same way they needed them before. So they're going to take, they're going to take the privileges away now. I mean, it's happening. It's happening all over the place. The job, you know, all, I mean, this is connected to the World Trade Organization. This is connected to the GATT, all the companies that are moving out of the U.S. and they're going over where they can hire people to work for $6 a day instead of paying somebody $15 an hour here and give them health insurance. You know, the way this is all unfolding. So the white people in America are in for a big surprise. See, the majority of the blacks never got out of poverty, you know. You know the, the majority of the blacks never made it out. The majority of the Indians never made it out. The majority of the Hispanics never made it out. They just allow enough of a percentage of us to make the, to make the so-called middle class thing, you know, so you have a little makeup on. But the whites were allowed to make it out. <laughs> now they're going to get put back in. And when it happens to them, they're going to go, they're going to have a very violent, <laughs> insane reaction to this. So all in prisons they're building and all these Super Patriot Act laws that they're passing now, the Sunset Law, all the, all the stuff that they're passing now about the right to spy, the right to pick you up, to call you a terrorist. They don't even need to have, all they got to do is call you a terrorist. They don't have to show any proof. They just got to say it. Well, go read what the Inquisitions were. Do a study of what the Inquisitions were. It's the same thing. This is, it's the very same thing. It just got a different shape. It's just dressed differently now. If you want to know where you're headed as a society, read about, understand the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages of Europe. And then just make this mental transference about, well, add neon to it. <laughs> add neon and rubber wheels and air conditioning to it, right? They're going back to that system. It's where it's headed in a major way. And, and the people of America, they, they just follow whatever promise they want to hear. They just follow whatever promise they want to hear. You know, and, and so they, they've got something coming that's they're not ready for. They're not psychologically ready for. It. <laughs> they're not mentally ready for. It. But, but those who would oppress us, they never stop. They're relentless. They're building the prisons now <laughs> to get ready for what we're not ready for. But you know, 30 million people by the year 2100, that'll probably be about 10% of the population. You know?